On your marks, get set, go. Please forgive me. Every broken promise, every dark thought, every time I said I could win, I could not.
was growing up, my, my grandmother was a big crocheter. And my mom did needlepoint. She made me this Nets picture I had on my wall. Probably till I was till I left the house. And I just remember watching how much work it took. <laughs> you know, just so and it started off looking like just some uh, strings all over the place. It was just straight, but they had a pattern in their mind. They or they were following along and, and day by day when they stuck with it. When they stuck with their project, you know, at the end, I had a new scarf <laughs> or those doilies that my grandmother used to love putting on, you know, under the lamps of everything. She always make those kinds of things. And my mom does it and my sister Nicole does it. And I sometimes when I'm at uh, conferences, I see there's, I think uh, there's a Reverend Mary who does, she crochets even during talks. And I'm always, I love it. I love it. You, you're doing something that doesn't require 100% focus, but you're doing it the whole way through. You didn't stop. You didn't take a break. You, even though you're at a conference, you're here doing it. Even though you're watching a show, you're doing it. When you can, I would love their diligence. There it was. You know, they had their little setup next. You know, my grandma had her chair with her ottoman, her grandma's chair, and there's grandpa's chair. But grandma's chair had her set up with all her crocheting stuff and all her her threads. And I, 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 I just never forgot it. It's just this idea that somebody can be working on something in the background. And then all of a sudden, it just looks like it appears. Oh, you got a new sweater. No, grandma was making that all year. You were, you were there the whole time. You didn't see? You know, this whole spirituality thing, when you... When you look at it, it's it it is it's a strange activity. Oh, you're gonna sing some songs and you're gonna read the Bible. You know, when you tell people you do that, they might say, "Oh, you're one of those types." You can just tell them, "You're the type of person that appreciates the process because you saw, you saw, you know, if you saw God." crocheting you saw god in all the little things and you were never surprised when god said and that's it because you you and god walk together you are never apart and that little example that i share with my grandma or just observing that's how i see god god exists in all of these little things and if you can, if you meditate and step back, you can see God working in the process there in the background. I didn't even notice. How did you turn on the lights and at the same time you're spinning the world? How did you do that? I marvel at that kind of stuff. So can you sit back with me for this hour? Don't. I'm gonna be marveled just as much as you. Because we're gonna let the spirit work. What happens? When you and me and Ellie sit together and watch the master work, her needlepoint, her threads, that's what we're going to do tonight. So sit back and let us worship the Lord. Give us hearts to pray, give us hearts to do your will, give us hearts to pray. Give us hearts to listen, give us hearts to do your will, give us hearts to listen. Give us 
experienced in my prayer and meditation a couple weeks ago I was sitting there and having a, a you know I was deep in a, a meditative state and I heard the spirit encouraging me to open my hands while I prayed kind of like this but it was on my lap so I had my hands open on my lap and I was listening to a worship song as I uh, was doing that. And it just had put me in this state where I could hear the Spirit say this, Open your hands and let me put my hands in yours like this. And I did that. I, I did. And it, it's so hard to put words to what happens in the in the in the divine state in the in the spiritual state 
I'll say it was like this. When I did that, when the spirit encouraged me to open my hands, when I felt that leading, it's almost like all of those who walked before me as believers, it's like their hands reached out to mine and we were praying together. So I encourage you to sit and open your hands like that and you can rest them on your lap. You could take a big deep breath in. Take a big deep breath out. You could do that one more time. Breathe in, then breathe out. Last time. Feel all of those who have walked before us. To know that I am linked to that. Shows me that I am eternal. Because if I can join in that circle, And I join in the circle of those described in scripture as the ones who circle around the throne of God, worshiping, singing holy, holy, holy. And feel never ending love, never ending joy, never-ending peace and eternal bliss. Jesus reminds us that all of these promises are waiting for those who trust in this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me today my daily bread. Forgive me of my sins and help me to forgive those who've sinned against me. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. i mm -hmm.
this week we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 12. We're looking at these stories in the same way. I, I want to tell you my approach. You know, I'm studying psychoanalysis, and actually, one uh, Max Grant, our the my boss, the Reverend here, the big dog, he uh, he introduced me to this book called The Existential Jesus, and it really threw me off. But he he knew I was interested in studying uh, interpretation and getting to kind of the root of or, or essence of lang- you know of meaning and language and what's going on in uh in dialogue and when we talk about stories anyway so max gave me this book and it wrecked me it, in such a good way i've read it twice already uh and i've given it to people it, there's i always put a disclaimer you know these are the books that my i think on amazon one of the reviews says don't buy this book because it's it's going to do something it's going to do something and here's the thing it's going to show you something that you have you know you have erected church to be this certain way this certain thing and when somebody introduces a completely different perspective it challenges what you have constructed and that's That's the really hard part about learning and growing is that when you do learn and grow, you say goodbye to the past in a certain way. You know, you don't play with toys anymore. You like toys, but there's a point at which you move beyond that. You know, you used to like going and going to parties and hanging out with friends. Maybe you still like doing that. But there's a point where you that's not what life is all about anymore you grow up and you say goodbye you remember those times those were the best times ever i remember partying in the with my friends in the military best memories ever but i'm married now i can't do that anymore and so all i have are just those memories just to think about to reflect on and that's what the bible is all we have we don't know if it's true. We don't know if it's real. Sometimes we don't even know who wrote it. And the beauty of this approach, no, no, I don't even need to know those that that information. I'm just gonna say, a story was written, a story that a lot of people died for. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take what they wrote down seriously. I'm not gonna be naive about it. Could it have been constructed a certain way? Yes. Is there, is it filled with, are there agendas in it? Yes. So let's not call it the truth yet. Let's just say today, you and I are going to read the Bible. So we open up to this passage and we start to read. Acts chapter 5 verse 12. It says this. So we're gonna take this paragraph, I'm gonna show you how to do this. You take this paragraph, you read it, and then you interpret it and analyze it. It says, now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. What are the apostles doing? What was Jesus doing? That's what the apostles were doing. The apostles in these stories and the disciples They are human beings continuing the work of the divine human, Jesus Christ. So they're not perfect, but you're going to see them striving to do what Jesus did. It tells you a disciple of Jesus does what? Goes to church, goes to synagogue on one day of the week and then never sees those people again? No. A disciple of Jesus is always with the other disciples. That's uh, that's something that's happening here. Is that right or wrong? I'm just saying, I want us to see what's happening in the stories. Then we can talk about if it's true or not true, or if that's the way we want to do it or not the way we want to do it. But let's just look at the story and let the story speak to us and not let us tell the story what it is. Just let... Just let it read. Let it go. So it says this. It says that they were all together in Solomon's portico. 
None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. That's interesting. The people like them, hold them in high esteem, but there's a resistance to these people. Let's keep reading. It says, yet more than ever, even though there was a resistance, more than ever, men and women, so many people kept coming uh, to see Peter. They wanted to see Peter so bad that they would lay sick people in the street, just hoping that Peter's shadow might hit them. Everybody was happy with this type of spirituality, this expression of religion. People were coming from all over the place, like a magnet, drawing it. It's what, it's what we hope for our church, right? We would hope that you would read something like this, that everybody would want to go there because they felt God's presence there so strongly through the work of the priests and the, the ministry of the church. They felt that. But these, these Christians who were Jews, but now Jews without a home, excommunicated, because we're going to find out somebody doesn't like them. And that whole thing, I always remind us, because I, I hear it and I don't like it. The Jewish people did not kill Jesus. The Jewish people were the first Christians. <laughs> Christianity is a sect of Judaism. It's a breakoff of Judaism. That's really what it is. And there was just one group that did not like Christians a lot, and that was the Sadducees. Remember, they did the ones they don't believe in resurrection, and Christians are pro-resurrection. But more, more than that, you're going to find out what the real problem was with Jesus and his apostles. And here it is. It says that everybody was going to these guys. So the, you might be going to temple. You might still go to temple, but your real spiritual experience was with these guys. But these, these Christians were getting the audience that typically would go where? To the temple. So guess what? It says, Then the high priest took action. He and all who were with him, that is the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their preaching. So they get arrested for preaching. Why? Because the Sadducees were jealous. It doesn't say that they didn't like what they were doing. What they were is, it, they're saying the old religious system was jealous of the new religious system. Why? Because the new religious system was actually meeting people's needs. And the old religious system banked on people's uh, obligation to it, their duty to it. Their dev it, it wasn't even devotion anymore. It was just something you did. And Jesus said, if, that, if you want the old religion, stay with it. Jesus was not being aggressive. He said, dust your sandals off. If they don't want it, even when people complained about what Jesus was saying, he said, I've come for the sick. If you're healthy, then what do you need me for? Don't bother Jesus. If, ever, if you don't need Jesus, he's not begging you to come to him. Jesus is saying, if you feel empty, if you feel weary, if you feel heavy laden, if you feel like when you go to church, nothing happens, if you don't, if you're not, if you go to work every day and it's empty, Jesus is saying, I have something for you. If you don't feel that, then I, Jesus is happy. He's not, he's not sad that you have found something. This is a gospel for those who are, and the Sadducees couldn't get over. Hey, 
if your religion is great, why are you looking at somebody else's? That's creating jealousy. But the Sadducees, the truth was is that their religion was empty. Their religion was dead. That's why they were jealous. Because they wanted what Jesus had. But Jesus, they wanted what the apostles had. They, they wanted that power to wield the power that comes with being an ambassador of God. But a true ambassador of God doesn't lord it over anybody. In Philippians, Jesus, it literally says, it was one of the earliest hymns of the church, that Jesus, though being equal to God, did not equate himself with God, but lowered himself to become a servant so that he can teach people about the true path to the divine. And that's what Peter and the apostles had found in Jesus. And that's what they had went. If you're not, if that, you know, these times are really going to test the church in such a good way. Because if church was just going to the thing you do on Sunday morning, then that's very much what Jesus was saying. Uh, yeah, that's not where I fit in. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I fit in where you feel like you want more, like you want to feel it in your being, where you want to feel so motivated that you would go and, and preach truth. You wouldn't let a lie linger. You would confront truth. That's what that's what these apostles were doing. They're not going to you kill Jesus. That's here's their saying. You kill Jesus because you were jealous of what he was doing. And you thought, "Oh, that's how we'll put out this fire." Instead, the Pentecost fire came. And it ignited the apostles to say Jesus is alive, not somewhere else, but in me. And I'm going to continue the ministry of Jesus. And so what happened? The people put them in jail. And then what happened when they put them in jail? The story says that the next day, an angel released them and they went back out preaching. And what's underneath this story? When you analyze it, when you interpret it, it's this. You can try to kill truth. You can try to beat it. You can try to put it in jail, but it will not ever let anyone in this earth tell it where to go. Now, people will fight and resist it. That's what John 1 says. But it does not say that it will overcome. The world will not overcome light. The darkness will not overcome light. Light will overcome it. So Jesus offers us, hey, do you want to get on the, board, the, the right train right now <laughs> or later? It's best to get on now. This story shows us the repetitive nature that truth has in this, in this realm that we live in. That truth wants to come out. Truth wants to be embraced there's a resistance to it. And it's often the people in power that have the ability to push it down. But no matter how hard you push it, it will pop up somewhere else. And so the story in analyzing and in interpreting it, it says a couple things to me. It says this, the truth, everybody likes truth. And everybody doesn't like truth. Truth has a, a flavor to it that's both delicious and bitter. So that's something I picked up here. That's, that's helpful to know. And then it talks about how when you say the truth, people will embrace it, but they don't want to like join you right away. And then it talks about jealousy and power structures. How when you have the truth, 
and the power structure has lost it. It might have had the truth at one point, but it's lost it now. It's going to not always embrace truth when it pops back up. And that maybe if we were to learn something here is is maybe a model of how how an older institution, you know, they don't always have to fight. <laughs> how can an older institution who maybe has lost its vitality and energy adopt and integrate itself and be and assim- become uh, harness the the energy and power of of uh, a more relevant truth that has entered into the consciousness of humanity. When we look at history, when we look at these memories and stories and and you know ancient tales, they, that's what they do for us. We can extract some truth from it, and then it has meaning and power in our day. So I hope. This week's reading of Acts 5, we didn't even finish the whole thing, (laughs) but these little uh, snapshots into scripture will inform your reading this week so that when you go through and read it, not only will you maybe remember to switch to, I'm going to be analyzing and interpreting these, you might be able to draw something that I didn't even mention out of the story. I would love to hear that. If you put a 20 pastors in a room, we might all have 20 different interpretations of this. And that's the beauty of it. It's when I come into contact with scripture, the scripture itself can be what it is, but because I'm such a dynamic, all of us are dynamic creatures, it will always have a different uh, read to it because it has a different meaning for each of us. So what I want to encourage is is a way for you to extract the meaning on your own so that you can do this all the time. Uh, and church becomes this place where we're all sharing our thoughts and opinions and moves away from just one person sharing their thoughts and opinions. Isn't that... Jesus was really trying to take us into a, a better church. And I think if we continue to just stick in there with Jesus, we'll, we'll finally get there one day. Uh this week, I, you know, Max has an 8.30 service. I know you, you, you visited Evensong, but uh, we ha- the church does offer an 8.30 service on Sunday mornings. Uh, it, now, because we're closed, obviously, that's tricky to attend. But we're doing our first one this week with a reopening. I think just 15 people are going to be there. But it's gonna, it's the, that service, why I like it a lot, is you get to ask questions. It, I don't think they have music at the service. It's more focused on the back and forth, very much like uh, how synagogue was when Jesus grew up, where the teacher taught and then the discussion was open to the whole group. And maybe even song should should learn from that because that's a great uh, way of learning and sharing and creating community. Uh, so. I hope that this week you will come up with some of your own interpretations, knowing that you have the tools now to look at scripture in a way that uh, is more realistic and more relevant for our day and age. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week. God bless.
no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be. the days we could get back together again the summers were always uh really special for even songers we would go out to the labyrinth and have uh just a great time worshiping a great time eating sometimes i would regret the next day because i decided to play basketball with michael and darren and uh jossie uh, but those are the days that I miss. Those are the memories I long for. So I'm looking forward to when we can eventually do that again. Uh, and we'll let you know. Let's pray that uh, this quarantine time, that we do it right, that we don't rush it. But we can also pray, hey, whoever's running this show, can maybe we turn the, the, the coronavirus down? Uh, but I... Even in saying that, I can hear God whispering, yeah, as long as you do what you need to do. So let's let's all do our part. We're going to practice being a safe church because we're practicing being good neighbors. And so that's why, but we're going to still do, call each other. Call one another. You, you can call each other. Hang, you can get together. I, I've had a dinner with a, some of the youth group kids this week. On the Av, you, you can do that. So even though we're apart, well, we can find ways of, of getting together, but we're going to do it in the safest, best neighborly way with as positive people who are chasing after the truth and letting God work in us on a daily basis so that we can be made into the image of what God has desired us to be and not let anyone else try to take over this magnificent work called you and me that's being made day by day. I'll see you next week. I hope this service was a blessing for you. Please reach out and let us know if it was.